Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, on today, we are going to talk about the top six things we loved and we also hated about the Carnival Magic. What are those six things? We're going to hit on the ship. We're going to hit on the food, y'all. Yeah, man. Food is important to everybody. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the entertainment. Yeah. We're going to talk about the bars on board. We're going to talk about our onboard experiences with the service on board. And we're also going to talk about our, <laughs> our cabin, y'all. Yeah, the, man. The junior suite. All right, man. If you stick around to the end, we're going to let you know uh, who we think the Carnival Magic is for. We're gonna be transparent to let you know how much we pay for the cruise. And also, we're gonna let you know if we would go on the Carnival Magic again. All right, man, let's get on into it. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the ship. ship. The Carnival Magic is a part of the dream class of ships. <laughs> so I can honestly say the thing that I loved is the size. size I man. think if I could go on a dream class ship, from now on, it's the perfect size for me. Let's go ahead and get into some specs. It is over 1,000 feet in length. So just, just think about how long that ship is. It's yeah. massive, y'all. Yeah, massive. But it's perfect at the same time. The guest capacity is just a little under 3,700 and the crew capacity is just under 1,400. So just That's think about that. That's a lot of people, That man. is a lot of people, but what I love even at 100% capacity, you never felt like you were on top nope. of no one. And you always felt like even, and it was important to us in this, <clears throat> we could spread out. Right. We could have our own space. Like you just had your own little bubble that you could contain yourself in. And I love that. Yeah, me too. Also, what I loved is they cleaned that ship up, yeah, down, sideways, man. around the corner. Day in, around the clock, and day mm -hmm. out. Another thing that I loved about it, because of its size, and my mom traveling with us, who uses yeah. a mobility scooter, mm -hmm. we never felt like she was in no one's way, right. and vice versa. Like she really could navigate that ship. Never had to do the excuse me, excuse, me, or feel like she's taking out any tables, yeah. going through the dining room. Game changer. So that yes. is a perfect ship if you have to get on with a wheelchair mobility scooter. Loved it. Yeah, another thing that I loved too was um, if you experienced it before, when you go out to, on the Lido deck or to any of the pools, it's hard to find a chair because everybody taking up all the chairs. I'm telling you, they had a massive amount of chairs, man. It was, a matter of fact, I think they had more chairs than they had people on the ship. <laughs> it, was, it was like, to yeah, the yeah. it's like, oh. Right. Oh. Yeah, especially on the Lido deck, most of the time those chairs are always taken and sometimes you gotta take your stuff and put it up on another deck and then go down to the pool. But nah, it was plenty of chairs, so mm -hmm. you won't even have to worry about that, man. You're gonna have a spot to set. Some of the things we hated yeah. <laughs> about the Carnival Magic was, one, because it was so big, they had this weird layout to the ship that we just didn't understand. Other ships have been very easy to navigate where you can look, you can see the nooks and where things were. On the Carnival Magic, it was more like a maze. There were just some yeah. places that unless you went there by mistake looking for something else, you never knew that that particular thing was there. The I hated was you could see the age on the carpeting on the ship. Everything else you could get past, but that carpet was terrible. Like you could tell that she had some foot traffic going her. Hell, she been around since 2011. <laughs> <laughs> and that carpet looked like it hadn't been replaced. <laughs> and the last thing I want to mention about the ship itself is that this ship is equipped with Pixels. Yeah, man. Oh my God. What and is when, pixels, man? And when I say pixels, I'm talking about when you go on your app, you could view your pictures yep. and download your digital pictures right from the app. A yeah, lot of the ships do dope. not have it where you have to just go to physically look at your pictures, buy the physical pictures and whatnot. No, you did everything from the app. Even if you wanted to buy the physical pictures, you can do it from the app and just go down there and pick up the physical pictures. Yeah. I love that this ship was equipped That was with game pictures. changer. Yeah, so we ain't had to come back home and take pictures of our pictures to put on Facebook. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next thing we want to talk about is the food, man. Mm. Uh, we got a love and hate relationship with the food as well. Um, 
we we used to when we're going on any ship or any vacation for food to be hit or miss right. but we like it to be more on the hit side the but rest. on the carnival magic i'm sorry it was more on the miss side yeah almost everything that we tried we was like mm. okay so did you even tap 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 the song right but then again, also when it comes down to food, one of our models is we don't expect for the food. It tastes like how we cook at home or grandma and aunt and them that can cook. Now nah, we expect for at least to be edible and good. Right. But, but majority. Some of this was like. Yeah, some of that. So to give you an example, so we went to, to Guy's Burger. The burgers was fire. Nothing was different about the burger, but the they fries. They were different to me. They were different fries, to me. The fries, fries, the fries was really different. The fries taste like they got them out of a bag and just dumped them in grease. Yeah, so, um, but they still were good, but they were different. They're you not know. the guys' fries you're used to. Right. Then we went to the blue iguana. The uh, They were good, but we felt like that was different. Yeah, nothing special. Yeah, it, it didn't like hit like it usually hit. Yeah. Next thing is um, C Day Brunch. Yeah. We always put C Day Brunch versus going to the buffet to get breakfast. C Day Brunch was on a one point. every time yes it was in my Food breakout meal for c day brunch i got yeah. the steak Ooh. eggs and home fried potatoes man and the only hate that i have about c day brunch was that i could not sit there and enjoy it because I had to clock in to go to work. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to see that brunch, I had to gobble it down, and then go back to my cabin and clock in for work and worked. So that was the only thing. Man, that steak was fire. But I was sitting there like, would it look bad if I just took my steak and just but clocked in to work? What you should have did, you should have went to Ashram and say, bring me another steak and wrap it up in aluminum foil and bring it home. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> it was good. All right, and this restaurant that we fell in love with was the Italian <laughs> yes, restaurant. Yes, that was so good. And what's the name of that restaurant? Because <laughs> I, I won't mess it up. Capitano. <laughs> yeah, so that Italian restaurant, the pasta was off the chain, y'all. It was. So good. So we highly recommend trying that if you go do it. You do it at uh, at noon, and you can, it's, it's actually, the noon one is actually included in your cruise fare. But if you go at nighttime, you got to pay okay. for specialty dining. But yeah. That's a good opportunity to try. You won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, usually the buffet is usually the miss for us. That's usually you go to the buffet because you don't feel like, you know, we going to the dining there. room or going somewhere else. You just want to try something different. The buffet food was on point. Everything, All, everything that we put on our plate was, was delicious. A1. Yeah. So I was like, they should have did a switcheroo <laughs> <laughs> because the next one is the dining room. The dining room was also a hit and miss. Uh, I, I almost felt like we should have dressed up and went to the buffet. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> to, to be honest, um, the best thing that we experienced in the dining room was next to the last day, which was the spear ribs. Them jumps was off the chain. What was it, Stanley? Uh, spare ribs, man. Because <laughs> like, they're going to eat you alive by them spear ribs. But y'all know what it is. The ribs, man. The barbecue ribs. That's what it were. Them Jones was good. Of course, the, the lava cake is always good. And it was actually cooked this time. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> but I, in, in my opinion, everything else was like fair. Yeah. Yeah, At it was. Best. So, good stuff. So with the food, there's going to be a thin line between love and hate with the food on Carnival Magic, just letting you know. And it's going to lean more probably to the hate. Right, <laughs> right. The next thing, which is important to me because we And only, to me too. Well, we only cruise like maybe twice a year at the most. So entertainment is everything yeah, my. for me because I cannot be one of those people that's bored. I always have to have something going on. And when I say entertainment was on point, it was on point. Our cruise director, remember this yeah. name? Yes. Ryan, Ryan Rose. Rose. But him, that fun squad. Oh. Huh, listen. Fire. Fire, fire. The they, energy that they brought yeah. was something <clears throat> out of this world. Man, they were having so much fun, you would have thought that they came on vacation with us. Yes. Like, they weren't even they they like they was working. Mm-mm. And I told my husband, I said, I love the diversity yeah. of the entertainment staff because at times you could not figure out where they ended and you began. Yeah. <laughs> because the they all cultures, creeds, I mean, it was phenomenal to see. And they were so personable. 
They were so relatable. Yeah. And they kept the party going. going. And the thing that I loved about the cruise director was he was everywhere at the same time, but different. But at the same time, you, see, you made it say like, I'm not present. He was like, I'm not present. And yeah. I would be like, how the heck did he just get from here to there to there to there? Yeah. And I just saw you over there. And he had a good way of pulling people out of their comfort zone and making them have fun. Where's Latrell? Yeah. On the dance floor. So just in case you didn't see the vlog on the 80s night, we was over in the corner minding our own business. And he ended up calling me into the dance challenge. Now, mind you, I cannot dance. That's not my thing. I will dance now. Yes, he will. Don't get it wrong, but I ain't known for that. <laughs> <laughs> you are today. Yeah, and he snatched me on the dance floor, man. But it was so fun. It was it was so fun. I was nervous as hell, but it was so fun. Oh my God, they <laughs> always came, whatever the theme for the night was, they came with all kinds of props. Ryan Rose dressed up as Medea as we left the ship, entertaining. Man. He up there twerking and doing, I mean, it was so much yep. fun. I'm a person that I do not like game shows. I think it's kind of like old schoolish. Like I'm like, this is it's kind of like, uh, whatever, corny. I, I put love my head shows. into a game show and we sat there for two game shows yep. because they were so <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. And of course that translates over into the guests that's on stage. Love and marriage, insane. Oh man. Insane. Highly recommend you go to that. Deal or no deal. Yeah. Was in, it Yo, was almost like, like you, you were, were fighting for your family to win. Right. You felt like you was in like a part of the show. It felt the same right. way. They had all the music. The, the sound effects, and then, of course, uh, Mr. Rose. <laughs> he made it even more funnier, man. It was it was dope. Remember his name. Yeah. If you want to cruise with him on the Carnival Magic, you have until October the 15th, 2022, yep. to get the experience on board. Then he's going to move on to another ship. The only thing that we hated about the entertainment on board was... Yeah. The comedy show. <sighs> yeah, this was actually the first time that we went to a comedy show with Carnival that we was like. I mean, it was painful. What? Very painful. It was painful. Yeah. Now he had some some funny stuff that he said, but it was it was less funny than than funny <laughs> things he said. So yeah. I don't remember his name, even if I did, I wouldn't say we it because I, I wouldn't put it out there. But yeah. Usually we love the comedy show, but yeah. not this time. All right, the next thing we want to talk about, I love and hate love hate relationship with the bars and the drinks. Um, first, I know usually people want to know if if the drinks were weak. It depended. Yeah. It depended on where you went. Now, this is our motto. We feel like on Carnival, any of the bars that's at the pools are usually the, um, the weaker drinks. They're weaker. They have more mixer than they have liquor. This time, the, the the Lido bars, the ones that were the bars, the Tides the, bar, the Tides bar was actually the best that was out there by the pools. All the rest of them was like, eh. even the um the tequila bar was a little weaker this time. Usually, yeah. usually over there they give you a lot of tequila, but I feel like they didn't do it on this cruise. But over at the Alchemy bar, that was great. Those drinks was perfect. Y'all y'all know we are stickler for the Alchemy bar, but however, this time we did not get that. Alchemy experience. Alchemy experience. Yeah, it felt like the staff was like really stressed out over there. Like, yeah, it was like what you need. Doom. It was no personalization to it at all. Yeah. So basically, we never even sat there. We would get out, get like one drink, and go back to our room. Yeah. And that's the most we visited the Alchemy Bar, yeah. which that's usually our spot. Like we like yeah. to try creative things because that's how we get to learn like what we like what we don't, don't like. like yeah but we didn't even have an opportunity to do it there and then also what i did love about the acme bar this time even though we didn't get their experience usually i get the hennessy sidecar but they did not have no hennessy so of course i instantly were like no hennessy but the bartender was like don't worry about it i got, I got you i got something better than hennessy i was like you got something better than hennessy okay he said good stuff <laughs> he gave um this cognac called hardy man uh, I want to officially say I believe that Hardy got Hennessy. Oh, my long shot. 
Uh, I've been trying to find it here in Richmond since I've been back off the cruise and nobody has it in stock. So I'm probably had to end up ordering it online. Mm -hmm. But if you've had the hearty cognac, let me know what you think about it down, down in, the, in the comments. But if you go to the Alchemy Bar, get them to give you some, man, so you can try it out. It's right. good. So the next bar that we love, which is the bar we always love, is the Casino Bar. They always mm -hmm. come through with the strong drinks. But this time we had the opportunity to try something different because usually we drink the high, the high, high seas tea. tea. Which y'all already know if you tried that, that don't put you on your boop. But uh, we was in the elevator getting ready to head to the <laughs> casino and we was talking to this young lady and she was like, oh, y'all going to the casino to the bar? You want to go ahead and try out the Tokyo tea. That's she right. Said, What's that, boo? Tokyo tea? She said, I don't know what's in it. Just we, was like, we was like, you sure you, you sh we was like, you sure you don't mean the, um, high, seas the high seas tea? The high seas tea? She said, said no. no, 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 no. It's Tokyo tea. And she said, be careful because it's going to put you on your A. Huh. I said, well, that's what I need. And she won't lie. I'm t man. Let me tell you. I apologize. <laughs> if you're on any of the like 50 people we took pictures with, like around day three or four. Yeah. I don't even remember. Yeah, so if you call her, if picture, you call her in her <laughs> it was the Tokyo Tees. <laughs> I reviewed the footage the next day and I said, I don't even remember taking this picture with. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> Also, another bar that we went to was the Red Frog Pub. Um, we felt like that those drinks, the prices was inflated. Cause I I, I asked them for some some Hennessy and Pepsi because they don't have Coke on the ship anymore, and they was like the girl was like it's gonna be like twenty one dollars, and I was like for a liquor and a mix. Those drinks was okay. That the price didn't justify the the cost to me. It didn't. Yeah. It was just a place to meet, do our meet and greet. So we always a stickler that if you want to get drinks, get it from the Alchemy Bar or the Casino Bar. Or Tides. Or the, the Tides the Bar. Back. Tides the, is in the back. All the way in, all the way in the back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk about the service on board. Listen, even with the staffing shortage, you never <clears throat> really felt like it was a big deal. Right. Did you notice? Oh, absolutely. You definitely noticed in places like the restaurants, or places where you had to get drinks. You definitely noticed, but it wasn't painful. Right. Like we're used to when you go to the restaurants, especially at night, that you know, by the time you finish your appetizer, your your dinner is sitting right there, or it's right. kind of like you feel rushed sometimes. No, there definitely was space in yeah. between your meals where you were like, you know, it was time to have conversation, but it wasn't painful to the point where you're like, where the heck Hell is, is my, my food? food? Yeah. Also, I will say that my our cabin steward was amaze balls. Yeah. Oh my god. He was the bomb.com. I know that's had, an old saying, but he was, <laughs> he man. He was. We had a guy named Arnold. And what I loved about Arnold was he quickly picked up on what our personality was. Yep. And he matched our vibe like he been knowing us for forever. Like the first day when he met us, he was like, you know, my name's Arnold and da 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 da. And we was like, what's going on with you, Arnold? How you doing? I said, you working hard or hardly working? So by us having that personalized um, interaction with him, yeah. every time he saw us, he was like, what's up, Lynette? How are you? <laughs> I mean, it was so, it, it, but then you would see that once he's dealt with somebody else, he matched their vibe yep. as well. So it was very, it was, it was cute to watch. But he had a he had a thing where he felt like Stanley was always in danger. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about. But every time I would walk out the cabin, and if he only saw me, uh -huh. because Stanley was a, ahead of me, he would pop out. Hey, hey, hey where's, where's Stanley? Stanley? I said he's right there. Yeah. Oh, uh -oh. he I, in front of you. I thought you did something to him. <laughs> I did what? I said, I said, my man, looking out for you, brother. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Also, our cabin steward, it seemed like he came in our room several times throughout the day when we only asked for him to come once. Yeah. And and the reason we say that is because we would leave to go see the C Day brunch, come back, our room is clean. Yep. We would go in there and just move some stuff around, but we would notice <laughs> when we come back. Everything is back in its proper place. And I was like, I know I didn't put that back. I'm no. on vacation. I ain't put that back. So we knew he was coming in there, just straightening up, tidying up, and just going on about his business. Yep. I loved it. And then one time we did catch him because we were on the secret deck yeah. in the front. And he peeked his head out the balcony. He said, 
Oh, I see you. I just go, I just go put your put your dry cleaning out and do this and, and straighten up a little bit. And I say, you fine, you fine. He said, he said, I come out puppy and I do. I said, all right. <laughs> but yeah, he was so if you if you get the pleasure of getting Arnold, he's gonna bless your life. Another thing that I love was that most people saw when you saw our vlogs that we were attempting to go on a dolphin encounter excursion in Nassau. Nassau experienced all of these storms and whatnot. So what I did hate, let's go ahead and get <laughs> this straight first, was that they had everyone meet in the theater that yeah. had an excursion. And I had never had weird. that before. Yeah, that like we weird. usually would go out and you have tents where you meet at outside. Yeah. But maybe it was because we had the storms. I don't know. So I hated that. But what I did love was that because the storms had rolled in, they gave us an option. What they said was, listen, y'all can get off this ship and go on to your excursion. And if it rains, if it thunders, if you get stuck over there for an insane amount of time before it's safe to bring you back, right. that's on you. You don't get a refund. But what we will allow you to do is get off this ship, walk around. If you don't feel like you want to go on your excursion after you get outside, get back on this ship and take your ticket back to guest services mm -hmm. and you will get a credit onto your onboard account. I love that it was just no hassle. Yeah. Just go ahead, make your decision. And we did, we went outside, we were getting ready to mm -hmm. go. And, the, and it started raining. We were like, okay, Caribbean rain is going to be all of 10 minutes. But it started lightning. Yeah, we don't do no lightning. So like we don't that. do the lightning. Yeah. So we just turned around and got back on. So keep that in mind. Uh, my husband had to remind me that. So when they give it to you, it's not a refund. It's yeah, a credit it, against your account. Yeah, no refund back to your account. Yeah. So if you have some expenses, it'll it'll reduce that reduce on it you. down or zero it out. Right. So this is the hate hate that I had, and it's because it was uncalled for, and I don't understand why they did it, but they did it. At C Day brunch, C Day brunch is not a very popular thing. It's like most people, you have to be an experienced cruiser to know that it exists. Right. Or you've been listening to my videos and your first yeah. time and you know it exists. And so it's never, on game. Yeah, so it's never really packed. You have plenty of space to sit down, spread out. But one particular day, they crammed everyone together. And when yeah. I say together, mm -hmm. they put you at a long table with like 10 people that you did not know. And I felt like in this, <clears throat> It was unsafe to do something like that. I know we all tested, you know, most people are vaccinated on board, all of that. But to be crammed into such a tight space where you were like this with your neighbor eating breakfast. And didn't have to be. And you didn't have to be because it was plenty of space. I hated that with a passion. The other thing that I hated was that also in the, even the dining room and that C Day brunch, I felt like, well, I didn't feel like, I would yeah. order, I would order two things but I only would get one of them. And it happened to at least two or three times. So I don't know if it was a language barrier that they didn't know what I was saying. Um, so I did hate that, that I didn't get what I asked for. One of the things we hated, and I'm glad we did not partake in it, because we kind of, we're from that generation where we can peep when things are about to be a problem or can potentially create a problem, yeah. was the club. They yeah. had the nightclub in in one of the smaller clubs. And in my opinion, they should have had it where they had the comedy hour because it was more space for people to spread out. Yeah. It was too many people in one space yeah. at one time. It was a recipe for disaster. I heard a few fights broke out. Yeah. We weren't there. Something else just happened. Yeah, it, it, it was that it club. It's not so magical. The club was showing up was a hole in, in the, the wall. wall. Listen, this is one thing that I love, but I'm still trying to figure out what kind of system they have going on because I need to use yeah. that in my everyday <clears throat> life. Everyone knew your name. Yeah. Now we're used to the cabin steward calling you by name. I'm used to the dining staff calling me by name. But what I'm not used to is other um, staff that are walking by greeting me by name. I yeah. was like, what the heck? You would have like the assistant to the main server all the way over there and he would see that you're finished with your food. He's never stopped at a computer. He ain't stopped at nothing. Nope. And he'll walk right up to you and be like, Lynette, you finished with that? What? Did you just call me by my government? Yeah. Do I got it on my <laughs> shirt or something? Like, where, where you, 
<laughs> you would be exiting the dining room and they'd be like, thank you for, for dining with us, Lynette. Yeah. But whatever they, they doing, y'all let me know. Cause I yeah. to, I'm bad with names. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next thing we want to talk about is our cabin. And there's no secret, man. We loved our junior suite. It's gonna be hard to go back to anything. <laughs> yeah, that's man. Bad. Especially with us, we love jacuzzi tubs, especially if the jacuzzi tub is in our room. <laughs> and it was so on point. We loved the space of the room. Right. Um, this was the first time on a cruise that we actually had some drawers to put our clothes in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um you had a his and hers closet. So yes. you, before you got into the bathroom, you also had this space where you could sit down at the van and yeah. get yourself together. Then you also had this closet space behind you yep. where you could actually just stand there and get dressed, check yourself out in the mirror. It was so dope. It was dope. They had double, double, sinks. double sinks in the bathroom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The so, space was unmatched. Now, the thing that... I don't know what we consider the hate is that what the normal price is, we wouldn't pay it. Yeah. Like, so for this particular room on this sale, it would have been about $5,000 to get that room. I would have never. Nah, we wouldn't have paid that. The dish likes. Uh, at some point, like, <laughs> like two or three days, our light would just come on by itself in the wee hours of the morning. Like, like we had a ghost there, like just turning our light on. It's like, what? And then not only that, then eventually the lights started flickering, like it was in the club, you know? And I was like, what the hell? So we end up, and then also one of the closet um, doors came off the hinges, but they were really good about coming and fixing it. For it to be such an exp uh, expensive room on a normal day, the, the lamps were hideous and they were broken, like they had yeah. little sharp pieces of glass. So I made sure not to even touch it. Another thing that I hated was, there were no outlets or USB yeah. outlets anywhere near the bed. When yeah. I say anywhere near, they all were at the bar area in that little sitting space up there by the door or in the vanity area. There was nothing else. Even the lamps were like hard wired into the floor. So it was like, <laughs> you could not sleep with your devices near you. You had to keep them away. From you, I mean, which in hindsight been 2020, it wasn't a big deal. But right. some of us like to turn over the middle of the night and look at our stuff. But if you did that, you would be not charging throughout the night. Another thing that we that we hated in the room was the mini fridge. But we used to hate the mini fridge everywhere we go because yeah, it's like, a real cooler. It's yeah, because they, they don't feel like they don't get stuff that cold or it takes a long time to get it cold. But the queen actually did a hack where you know you can crack Just the crack it. Crack it. So, so it can free, work harder. Yeah, and then that actually speed up the process of uh, cooling off the drinks. Yeah. But overall and all, we love the room. Yes. We love the room. So to answer the question as promised, who do we think the Carnival Magic is for? I really think that the Carnival Magic is for everyone. Yes. It has the space where families can get together, friends, yes. colleagues, like any or your travel groups. Like you can get together. Everyone can have fun on board. There's always something to do. At one time, there's always time to chill. There's always spaces to chill. Yep. Especially, I'll say this and I'll say it again. If you are wheelchair accessible, um, have accessibility issues, or you're in a mobility scooter, it is the perfect space for perfect. you to be able to navigate this ship yes. without feeling like you're being crowded or crowded upon. So I think it's for everyone. everyone. I it's totally a agree. great size ship. Yes, I totally agree. As promised, we said we were gonna be transparent, let you know what we paid for this cruise. And what we paid was $1,182 for this cruise. You're like, what? Y'all paid included, a, I paid eleven $1 hundred dollars for for the suite. Including yeah. the prepaid gratuities yes. and the vacation protection insurance. But let us explain. Right. <laughs> so how we were able to get that deal was that the queen, because she is a travel agent, she was able to get a special travel agent rate for this particular sailing. And then Carnival sent us an upgrade offer to the Junior Suite because we had a balcony booked at first. So this was actually an upgrade. Right. So we don't want you to think that you can get it at this price. It's very possible that you can, but most likely you probably have to pay the market value unless a deal comes along right. or you get an upgrade that you have to pay for. 
Um, so yeah, that's how we was able to get that price. Mm -hmm. But again, like we said, we don't think the room is worth five thousand, right. twenty five hundred dollars for the most for two people. And will we sell on her again? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh yeah, man. Look, let me let y'all in on a little secret. We already booked. Yeah. October the 10th, 2022, we're going to be on the very last sailing that Ryan Rose will be the cruise director yep. on. There is going to be a good old time, y'all. Like, listen, this was supposed to be just the closeout to our travel season for my husband and I. Right. And most people have in my family have checked that. Yeah, they done hijacked going, it out of vacation. And they yeah. going to. <laughs> so this is actually round two of what we just did a few weeks ago. So I'm excited about it, super excited. Yep. You know, we always try to charter a limousine or a party bus from here to the port so that we don't have to drive, just take our time, just chill. <clears throat> So we're gonna do that once again. If you're interested yeah. in being on that sailing, I'm not creating a group. Listen to me, listen to me good. <laughs> not creating a group. But if you're interested, you have the date, you can book it yourself, or you can ask me to do your booking for you. Yep. And I will see you on board. We can have a good time like we did. If y'all were on the last sailing that we yeah. were on, everyone had a good time. Everybody was so beautiful. And we look forward to seeing you if you decide to do that. Yeah. And if you decide that you want to book, you can visit um, www.codefrontravel.com is on the screen. All right, man, if you enjoyed this video, you wanna go ahead and check out our vlogs on the Carnival Magic so you can see how much fun we had in our experience. And you know what? We're gonna catch you in the next video. Peace.